Yes, we all want to see the graph of pi sub b. In a previous video, I showed that if you have an ellipse given by this equation, then the formula for the circumference is given by this integral. So if you define e to be b divided by a, the eccentricity of the ellipse, and you define pi sub e to be this integral in terms of a's and b's, it turns out one can prove that pi sub b only depends on the quotient b divided by a, so it only depends on the value of e of the eccentricity, and with this formula, the formula for the circumference of an ellipse is just 2 times a times pi sub e, which reminds us of the formula 2 pi r for a circle, for a circle of radius r, which is the case of the ellipse of a equals b equals r. So people want to know, what are some values of pi sub e? How does it change with respect to e? Let's first look at some special values of pi sub b. As I said, when a equals b equals r, in that case, the eccentricity is 1, we have a circle of radius r, and then the circumference is 2 pi r, so pi 1 equals pi. In the case when b equals 0, the eccentricity is exactly 0, and that corresponds to the degenerate case when the ellipse has become just two straight lines from minus a to a. That length is 2a, so the circumference is twice that, 4a, and therefore, in this case, pi sub 0 equals 2, is 2a times 2, so pi sub 0 is 2. Now, this is something really interesting. When you have an ellipse that is twice as tall as it is wide, so b is 2a, then you could turn in 90 degrees and get an ellipse that is twice as wide as it is tall, meaning that b is half of a. And what that's saying, that this circumference is the same as that circumference, but that says that 2 times a times pi sub 2, which is this case, is equal to 2 times 2a times pi of a half. And that gives you a relationship between pi sub 2 and pi sub a half. So pi sub 2 is twice pi of a half. And in fact, similarly, for any alpha, for any positive real number alpha, pi of alpha will be equal to alpha times pi of 1 over alpha. This means that you can actually deduce all the values of pi sub alpha for alpha bigger than 1 from the values that are between 0 and 1. So we actually only need to graph pi sub alpha between 0 and 1. Okay, before I graph it, let me compute some values. What is pi of a half is 2.422, etc. Pi of 2 is twice that value, is 4.844, etc. Pi of a third is 2.22, 2 etc. Pi of 3 is twice that value, is 6.68, etc. Now, finally, here's the graph of pi sub e. We have found out that at 0, the value is 2. The value at 1 is pi, as it should be, and the function grows between 0 and 1. And here's the graph, for example, between 0 and 10. Interestingly, I can show that pi sub e is approximately 2 times e for large values of e, so what happens is that the graph of pi sub e, as it grows, is actually asymptotic to 2 times e. And finally, just for fun, I computed some interesting values of this pi sub e. What happens if e, the eccentricity, is pi itself? Then I get 6.9482, etc. And what happens if the eccentricity, if the ratio between b and a is the golden ratio, then I get some value of pi sub uh, golden ratio, which is 4.169, etc.